Well, all eyes seem to be on Europe still and the problems. One day it's good news, the next day it's bad news. What does it mean for the euro and maybe the U.S. dollar as well? Our guest today is John Carter to talk about that. So, John, let's talk about the euro first. Where do you see this and all this news coming in? Where is it headed? It's pretty crazy, and I wish them the best of luck. I mean, you know, in the United States, of course, we have different states that have different issues and stuff like that, but Europe is a completely different animal. You know, Italy is not a state, it's its own country with its own traditions, with its own pride. Same with Greece, same with Germany, and same with everybody else. And that's the biggest issue they're facing. So with Italy right now, you know, luckily they've made some changes there recently and that should help. But you see these countries spiraling out of control to the point there really is an issue where, you know, Italy could wake up one day and say, you know what, screw this, we're going back, you know, to our old currency. And if that happens, then suddenly this, it just completely, you cannot have the euro without Italy. That's just it. I mean, there are, you could, you could probably survive without Croatia, but there are some, you know, key economies there that they have to keep. And so you got two things going on there is you've got one uncertainty, which is going to keep downward pressure on the euro. And by the way, the, and the U.S. dollar seasonally at this point typically rallies, and I am actually looking for the dollar index to continue to rally seasonally. But then fundamentally what's going on in Europe, you've got, you know, all this kind of quagmire of problems. And then on top of it, what's really happening and the reality of it is, is that between the United States and, the Euro and Europe, you know, both these economies, for a while I thought, wow, Europe's pulling out of this recession faster. Now it's clearly evident that Europe is not. In fact, they are stalling to the point where it could get pretty nasty, uh, which also bodes well for the dollar and is going to push the euro lower. The reality of it is, is that, and the, and the reason why bonds are moving higher so much right now is that if Europe truly goes into a steep recession, which is why bonds are rallying, because they think that could be a distinct possibility, it's not that China and India will sit there and continue to do well. They will get impacted by that as well. So you're talking like Europe could drag the entire world down into kind of another you know, double dip recession kind of a thing. So all of this points to shorting the euro on rallies is a good idea. It seems that every so often we hear a little bit of a groundswell about how the euro is hurting us and there it's it's faltering, but usually it's in bad times and when the economy improves, you stop hearing about that. Is this just another temporary talk about this or is this more, do you see it more serious this time? It, this is a bigger thing. And I, I think the biggest disconnect right now that a lot of governments have had is that they really thought truly that everything that they implemented in 2009, 2010, that was gonna save the real estate markets you know, in the US and in Europe and things were gonna go back to normal. Not only are they seeing that that's not happening, but they see things that, wow, things are gonna get worse again. So I really think that the, I think 2012 is gonna be a very surprisingly tough year uh, for Europe and for the US. I mean, I do, we are gonna pull out of it. Things will be, you know, things will kind of be on the upswing again. Whereas, you know, all the governments around the world thought by now, things would be doing well. Real, in reality, it's going to be closer to like end of 2013. There's a lot of stuff that needs to get through the system, and Europe's dealing with that right now. All right, and finally, the trade then on the U.S. dollar index and the euro, what do you suggest? Well, the, the, of course, the, being, looking for a stronger dollar, to me, the easiest way to play a stronger dollar is to short the euro. So you can do, of course, euro currency futures. You can do euro spot, the EUR, USD cross. But an easy way to do this, too, is if you don't want to take a lot of um, like uh, margin risk, is uh, there's a ETF, FXE, which is on the euro. And so you can just buy put options a couple months out on that and just sit on it. And that way you're only risking the premium and you're not having to dive in and do all these crazy leverage stuff if that's something that you're not comfortable with. John, thanks for your time. Thanks for having me here. You're watching the moneyshow.com video network.